Let's implement the ALU from Chapter 2 of the Elements of Computing Systems. I'm going to start out with um, changing our names here. Create a subcircuit for the ALU itself. And let's put some pins out here. So first of all, the ALU is mostly dealing with performing math on two 16-bit values. So this will be the X input. And then we'll need another Y input 16-bit value. And then, of course, we'll need an out. Kind of stick it down here. These are all going to get moved around as I build this out. But And since it's an output, we need to set it as such. To control the ALU, it's done with a bunch of different flags. First one is the ZX flag, which basically means 0x. I think I'll put the pins here. And then we need a pin for uh, negating x. And then we need basically the same thing for Y. Okay. And then we need the F signal which is basically the signal that tells tells the ALU whether you're adding or you're anding the two together. And then finally, we need the negate signal, which tells the ALU whether you want to negate the final output or not. So then for the output, we've got the register, or the, not the register, but the result. But there are two additional flags that are asserted on the output. One flag is if the output is a zero or not. And that one is called ZR. And it's an output. And then the other flag is whether or not the value here is negative. And you know, we deal with two's, two's complement numbers. So in two's complement form, uh, negative is indicated with the last bit being high. So if, if the last bit is high, basically this flag is set to true. I think the first bit we'll implement is what I, in my own code, I term the preprocessor. So let's preprocess X. So the first two, these first two flags, the zero X and, and the uh, negate X, I do through a series of uh, multiplexers. So for the, let's, let's deal with um, zeroing X first. So... Uh, and I'm gonna kind of I'm gonna move these things around now to kind of get get them out of my way. Z zero x either means pass x through or pass a zero through. So to do that, we will implement a multiplexer. And this mux. 
uh, has has 16 data bits because we're passing X through and has one select bit because we only need two, two choices, basically, whether 0x is high or low, and that determines whether or not you're passing x through or you're passing zeros through as the x value. And let's turn this north. If ZX, if ZX is true, that means the, the the one value, which is down here, is passed through, which is zero, so we'll need to put a constant in there. Otherwise, we pass the value of X through. So let's add some constants. So this needs to be 16 bits of value, and the actual value is a zero. Now I imagine you could probably create pins that are all grounded and you could bust those together and send them through. I, you know, this does the same thing, I'm pretty sure. And it may be a more compact form. Okay, so the next part of the X preprocessing is negating X, which is this NX value. And again, that's done through uh, another multiplexer where we, you know, either take X as it is or we negate it. So let's put a multiplexer out there. So if negate X is true, that means we want to negate it. And in order to negate it, we need to run it through an inverter. And oh, yep. And so in this inverter, it needs it's 16 bits. So if nx is true, we want to invert, which means the inverter is going to go down to this signal. And oh, I didn't change the bit width of this mux. This mux is 16 bits, which is right. So right, so the output of the 0x goes through the inverter and is fed into the one side of the select bits when the not x is true. Otherwise, if not x is false, we want just to basically pass the value of the output of this mux. So we can do that like that. And so that has implemented our not x flag. Okay, so as to not bore you, I went offline, duplicated the functionality for y that I did for x. So this is an exact replica of this. And now the next thing that we need to do really just gets into adding the signals together. So really there's two, two things that are needed here. You know, we need, a, we need an adder to add and we need a AND gate to do the ANDing. And then we need a selector or a multiplexer in order to, to determine which output we want from, from the operation indicated by the F flag. So let's get our... Now the AND gate is probably easier. Well, let's pop that out there first. So let's let's wire that one up first. Oh, and it would help if I put the right number of data bits on my my AND gate. Okay. So there's our AND output, and then we need the same X and Y fed into the adder. So we need to add our adder component. Oops.
and I'm going to make that thing smaller. It's just it's too big. We need the output from X and Y to go into the adder, and then we're going to have to add a multiplexer to select between these two. So let's just go ahead and... wire the adder up and then here's the first output we need to multiplex and then here's the second one so we need a multiplexer I guess we'll stick it here it's hard to know where to stick these things to make this work the best but okay so our multiplexer Need 16 bits. Oops, wrong one. Data bits, 16. Selector bits, one, because again, we have one bit F flag that we're dealing with here. And then on the zero side of the MUX is the AND. And on the one side, we need the sum. Right, so now that this mux, the output of it, implements the F flag. So the final operation we need to actually get some output is uh, implementing the negation flag. That's the NO for negating the output because this is the output right here. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and put a inverter. I don't want to move it down here because it just keep all this in frame a little better. And I didn't set the bit width again. And then just to implement this, we need another multiplexer. And I believe when, yeah, when this flag is true, that means negate. So we'll want the negation. Oops, I almost did it again. This needs 16 bits. So our negated output goes into the one side of the signal. Uh, let's hook our signal up. And then the non-inverted side needs to go here. So that's basically just taking a connection from there. And now here we have our output. So we can just do this. Let's make him face the other way. And just like that, we have most of the ALU implemented. So the first flag implements really easy. It's the um, negation or the uh, negative flag, sorry. That's NG. NG is true when the output is negative, which means that the last bit is true. So to implement that, we need a splitter. To split all the signals. And we don't want that connected. And this will be a little messy, but that's okay. And so the negative flag, if we hook it up to the fifth to the fifteenth bit, and let me flip it around. A 
Okay, finally, we have the zero flag, which means if the output is zero, this thing should be true. Easiest way I found to, found to implement that is um, basically oring all the bits together. I think it'll let us do a 16 input OR gate. So it's 16 bits. Uh, sorry, no, it's uh, it's one data bit, but the number of inputs is 16. Ah, there we go. I'm gonna zoom in because it'll be easier to hook this up, I think. And I think I'm gonna move this down to get it out of the way. Okay, let me put this guy back. Right, and so now, after all of that, again, back to what we were doing, was that we're trying to implement the... Here we go. The zero flag, indicating whether or not the output is zero. Okay, so... This is going to yield a one if any of these are ones, but we want the opposite, so we need an inverter. And there we go. I believe that completely implements the ALU.